everyone. We're back here at Hims TV and we have our good friend Rizwan, which we already spoke to yesterday, but today we're going to have a slightly different topic of conversation. So Rizwan, we've been seeing a lot of companies um, come together and collaborate. We've been seeing a lot of mergers. We've been seeing a lot of acquisitions. Mm -hmm. What's your sort of thoughts on that? What's your view on what's going on around the world at the moment with collaboration? I think people are understanding the value and importance of collaboration. Um, it makes sense on many levels. On the one hand, saves on R&D, um, take best practice from different organizations and embed them. And if you can actually demonstrate that your solution is one which is able to integrate with others, it gives the end user more confidence that it's able to integrate with their institution, with their workforce, with their organizations. Uh, so I think it's good we see it from both a commercial angle and also from an efficiency and safety point of view as well. Right. Very interesting. And, and how would you, I mean, we're obviously here at HIMS and HIMS is a big organization. How do you think HIMS could play a role in, in, in the collaboration? Well, that's, that's a good point. What I've seen over the past three days that I've been in Saudi, having never you know, talked in, in earnest and, and shared platforms with colleagues here, is that we're talking about the same things again and again and again. And if we had a forum where we could share that learning and shortcut some of the timeframes, right. here is what we did in one country or in one type of organization. Here were the things that we thought were good. Here were the pitfalls that we'd like you to avoid. And then take those. And given that you know we have HIMS deployed and have these conferences in other countries, perhaps this would be a useful mechanism where you could have um, thought leaders, engage people, come to share some of the learning. And I suppose part of it is you're not talking about the chiefs. You want more and more engagement with just people on the ground floor to get right. that perspective. That's a great idea. Thank you for that. So we've talked about international collaboration. We've mm -hmm. talked about healthcare really going across the oceans. But really, if, if we take it back to the ground level, to the people working on a day to day, how would you perceive that collaboration and that international expertise coming to the to the working people, the people there in the trenches every day? I think that that's actually the most important aspect of it, because ultimately it's not the software itself, it's not the organizations themselves, it's not even the COOs and the chief execs who are going to affect change. The change is going to be effective at the bedside level, between patients, between clinicians, between admin and clinical staff. And what again, what I found is that we all share the same concerns, we all share the same anxieties. Very simple one, AI is going to take over my job. Yeah. Well, we've been down this road, we've deployed it safely without it taking jobs in some of our organizations. So what were the lessons that we learned? How did we help our colleagues to overcome those so that we can perhaps go to another um, country, another institution, another sector, and try and really appeal to the users because the sooner we can get over this anxiety level, the sooner they'll be able to engage. Right, great, thank you for that. So Rizwan, we've seen a lot of people at the event uh, in the last few days talking about population health mm -hmm. and population health management. Um, I, one of the things that I'm always wondering about is, you, you know, you've traveled the world and you've had experiences from everywhere. Would you be able to share some of your thoughts around what you think population health is and if there's a good example that you can share with our audience today? I think the principles are, we, as I said, people talk a, a great game about the value of big data and how it can impact population health. But right now, what we do is we, we almost pay lip service. We talk about the data, but then we distill it down to an individual patient level. And what, you know, the bigger changes are to be made when you can affect change over an entire community, preventative medicine, and this should be guided by the principle of what we do. I think we're a little bit too focused still on curating things which only work patient to patient or hospital to hospital. Whereas if we can deploy them at um, a local, a regional, even a national level, ultimately what we're all striving for is improve patient outcomes and better health for everybody. Right. And have you seen any, any good examples of that in your travels? I think we're a little bit too early in the journey for that yet, right. but um, probably the best one is um, the use of uh, electronic controlling of diabetes. I think diabetes as a, uh, a as a, a disease process is right. where you, you know, we've got AI which looks at retinal scanning, which can affect change broadly. You've got 
um, these monitors which can do live monitoring of your blood sugar level and adjust your treatments on the fly rather than having to do them at intervals. Right. I think if we use wearable data um, or the technology that exists around us, we can perhaps just embed it into what we do, make it a cultural thing. Right, that's great. Thanks for that. Really appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you again really soon. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.